Hello, I'm Wayman Hunt at Godfrey's Feed in Madison, Georgia, and we are a sixth generation feed company that has been served in the Southeast since the 1870s. Um, today, we are joined by some, some of our colleagues at Alltech who provide us with some of the minerals that we use in our products to, to kind of talk a little bit more about the benefits and what we're doing with those products. Our bag feeds that have the Alltech products in them are Bull Test, Show Calf, Super Calf. Uh, those, those bag feeds have Bioflex High 4 in them. And then our show feeds are um, the winning program feeds also have a, a, a full dose of the Bioflex Zinc, the High 4, and the Cellflex, which are all Alltech products that um, add chelates to these, these feeds. Um, all these technologies are also available in our minerals and bulk feed as well. If you look at our minerals, uh, a sampling of our minerals, kind of good, better, best, uh, the grazer and all purpose would be good. The betters would be the free choice, the high mag and the, the free choice with the IGR and the best would be the TRT breeder mineral. As you move up the line, you increase in the quality of the ingredients. And as you get up or start at the bottom, you're, you're mainly looking at oxides. And um, then as you move into the middle, you get into some, some sulfates and then the top end is gonna be chelates. And today we have gotten uh, Laurentia Van Rensburg, uh, who is originally from South Africa. Uh, Laurentia holds a master's in animal science from the University of Kentucky. She has worked for several years in the livestock industry, including in South Africa, Latin America, and North America. She currently serves as the technical mineral manager on the Alltech mineral team. And I've gotten Laurentia here to kind of go into the detail and, and hopefully make those comments that I just made make a little bit more sense. Uh, she's going to explain to us what these are, what these technologies are, how they help us, and, and why they're worth putting in, in your products. So I'm going to turn it over to Laurentia, and uh, at the end, maybe we'll have a few questions and answers. Thank you, Wayman. Thank you, Godfrey's um, feed, for the opportunity to talk with your listeners on this webinar, but also for the opportunity to partner with such a quality client in help providing our beef producers with, with such a superb program. So um, if, you, if you listen to the previous um, series in, or the first part of this webinar um, that was presented by Dr. Scaletti, we'll know that mineral nutrition is a very small but very important part of a complete nutritional program. And as Dr. Scaletti mentioned in the first series, when it comes to minerals, there are two categories. Uh, we have macro minerals, such as your calcium, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, for example. And then you have a category, category called micro minerals or trace minerals. So for the purpose of this presentation, we will focus on the importance of trace minerals specifically and how they can actually impact performance and profitability in a beef operation. So trace minerals, including copper, zinc, manganese, cobalt, and selenium, are essential nutrients. And even though they're only needed in very small amounts, when animals are not receiving enough, or even when receiving too much, it can actually create trace mineral imbalances, which will affect overall health and performance. So in the past, when we looked at trace minerals, mostly in terms of just preventing a certain deficiency, um, for example, white muscle disease, which is um, a manifestation of a selenium deficiency. Today, however, we know that trace minerals are required in many different metabolical and physiological processes, including hormone synthesis that will impact reproduction. It's also essential for cell replication and repair. And trace minerals are also required for optimizing the immune system. So with most trace mineral programs, we can most likely prevent a clinical deficiency such as white muscle disease, but it is often cattle that are in marginal trace mineral status with no visible signs of a deficiency that actually cost us more by just not performing 
quite as well as they could or as they should. So these trace minerals and their functions are often very much interrelated and balanced against each other. Given the importance of these essential nutrients, it is just no surprise that even the smallest change in your trace mineral program can have a tremendous impact on biological and metabolical pathways, which in turn will directly impact health, growth, and reproduction, which obviously impact profitability um, of the cow-calf operation. So the level of trace minerals in feedstuffs can vary greatly. Some trace minerals, for example, um, such as iron, are present in sufficient quantities to meet the cow's production demands, whereas other trace minerals are frequently insufficient, and therefore they need to be supplemented. Grasses will also differ in typical trace mineral concentrations, and we can also expect to see seasonal variation in trace mineral concentrations as well. Most grass species are typically deficient or low in especially copper, zinc, and selenium. And if we look at the average trace mineral concentrations reported for Bermuda and Bahia grass, which I know is typical grasses being grazed in um, the Georgia region, you can clearly see that compared to the cow's actual requirement, the nutritional value for these grasses are indeed below the cow's requirement, and therefore supplementation is needed. So supplemental trace minerals is needed to bridge that gap between the amount available through forages and to actually supply the cow's requirement. But the form of these trace minerals used to supplement with are actually even more important than the amount. And by form or source of trace minerals, we typically refer to inorganic or organic type of trace minerals. So to go back and refresh a little bit about what Dr. Scaletti talked to us about as well, is if we look at inorganic trace minerals, these are typically the most common trace minerals used. And they are actually, um, and they'll be denoted as sulfates, oxides, or chlorides on your tag. Inorganic type of trace minerals are mostly byproducts from industrial processes, such as the mining industry, and they are very inexpensive and often used at high inclusion rates. However, when it comes to trace minerals, more is not necessarily better. It has to do with bioavailability of the product. And as Dr. Scaletti mentioned, Bioavailability refers to the animal's capacity to actually absorb the trace minerals and how the body will utilize it post-absorption. Inorganic trace minerals, your sulfates, oxides, chlorides, typically have very low bioavailability. So when supplemented with this form of trace minerals, the majority of the inorganic trace minerals cannot efficiently be absorbed and are actually being excreted into the environment. Organic trace minerals, on the other hand, refer to the fact that the mineral or metal ion are bonded to an organic molecule, such as amino acids and peptides, for example. This is much more reflective of the way the mineral would be present in nature or natural feedstuffs. So as a result, organic trace minerals are this better absorbed compared to our typical inorganic sources. So requirements for maintenance, growth, production, and reproduction must be satisfied by dietary intake. And if you have low intake, you will have a negative impact on the tra animal's trace mineral status. Trace mineral status can also inadvertently be affected by poor absorption, often due to the use of inorganic trace minerals with low bioavailability and even mineral-to-mineral -mineral antagonisms. For example, um, Dr. Scaletti mentioned that high levels of iron in water or forages can induce cobalt, copper, manganese, selenium, and zinc deficiency. And when you have excess copper in the mineral supplement, um, if it's in the inorganic form, it can also potentially interfere with zinc absorption. So inorganic trace minerals, furthermore, also have very strong pro-oxidative properties. So they can have a negative impact on other dietary ingredients, including vitamins that's included in your mineral supplement. 
And then, of course, at high levels of supplementation and poor absorption, we will see more of these elements being excreted, which lead to environmental concerns due to buildup in soil and water sources. So considering the poor bioavailability, the potential for mineral to mineral interactions and impact on other dietary ingredients, including your vitamins, the question is, do we really need to be feeding our animals with these high levels of oxides and sulfates if they cannot really use it efficiently in their favor? So as one of the world's biggest organic trace mineral manufacturers that has that this negative effects of inorganics has really prompted us to look at a much more efficient trace mineral strategy. And with our organic trace minerals, Bioplex, we basically take the metal ion and we bind it to amino acids and peptides, creating organic trace minerals that is categorized as proteinates. This form of organic trace mineral is as close as you can find minerals in nature. And therefore, we see much more of the mineral being absorbed and actually utilized by the animal. Since it is so much more bioavailable than the inorganic sources, we can also use it at much lower levels, which is better for the animal and the environment. So since the animal don't really need the inorganic form of trace minerals, we basically recommend taking out all the inorganic trace minerals and supply with lower levels or levels closer to the animal's actual requirement with Bioplex and Salplex, Salplex, which is our selenium yeast. We call this approach total replacement technology. And this is a very efficient approach that maximizes absorption and minimizes excretion. And this innovative and advanced approach when it comes to trace mineral supplementation have been adopted by Gottfried in several of their mineral products. And here, for example, on the screen, you can see an example of their breeder mineral tag where it says Gottfried's breeder TRT mineral, basically meaning that all the inorganic sources of copper, manganese, zinc, and selenium have in fact been replaced with Bioflex and Salflex at optimum levels. So basically, total replacement or the reference to TRT that you see on the Gottfried's label refer to the fact that they have taken out the inorganic trace minerals and replaced them with Bioplex and Salflex at lower levels. With this approach, we can avoid the mineral to mineral antagonisms we see with inorganic trace minerals and also avoid the negative effect inorganic trace minerals can have on other ingredients, including vitamins and enzymes. So, this approach has been very well researched, and we've seen excellent research uh, or results in cow calf operation with tremendous improvements in reproductive efficiency and weaning weights that will directly impact profitability. For the purpose of this presentation, let's take a look at a case study consisting of two university research trials and two commercial ranches that have used Bioplex and Salplex as part of a total replacement mineral strategy, which is similar to the technology Godfrey's are incorporating in their mineral products. So in these two University of Florida studies, the cows received either the typical higher inclusion rate of trace minerals in the inorganic form or bioplex and salplex at total replacement recommendations. In the first university study, the researchers also looked at the effect of these different trace mineral sources on different cattle breeds. So both Angus and Brangus cows were part of the trial. In the first University of Florida research study, Angus and Brangus cows that received Bioplex trace minerals shown in orange had higher colostrum immunoglobulin levels of 12 and 24 hours compared to the cows that received the inorganic trace minerals, which is denoted in gray. So higher quality colostrum or colostrum rich in immunoglobulins from the Bioplex cows affected immunoglobulin intake for the calves. And calves from cows supplemented with Bioplex, this had higher serum immunoglobulin A levels measured at 24 hours post colostrum intake than calves from cows receiving the traditional inorganic trace minerals. And this is a classic example of that passive immune trance. 
So total calf serum immunoglobulin levels were also higher at 24 hours for calves from Bioplex cows. And these calves were actually even able to maintain higher IgG levels when measured again at 30 days old. So clearly using the more bioavailable source of Bioplex trace minerals meant that the cows had better quality milk and that the calves subsequently were in better immune status as a result. So we talk about improvement in immunoglobulin levels in colostrum and calf serum, but how does that translate to profitability? And I think it's important to remember that calf serum IgG is considered a direct measurement of calf immunity, and we know that healthier, healthier calves will typically grow better. IgG, for example, helps neutralize bacterial and viral challenges, where IgA protects against respiratory type of challenges. And we saw an improvement in both um, IgG and IgA with Bioplex and Southplex supplementation. We always talk or say that a calf never gets over a good or a bad start. And I think optimizing their immunity is one way to help them to be better prepared, not only against any disease challenges, but for optimum vaccine response as well. So the calves from cows receiving Bioplex trace minerals were in better immune status as measured by IgG and IgA that I've shown you. And in this study, it actually translated into higher weaning weight with calves from Bioplex cows weighing on average 20 pounds heavier per calf at weaning compared to the calves from cows receiving the inorganic trace minerals. So clearly this is a great example of how cows in optimized trace mineral status have healthier calves and how healthier calves do end up growing better. In the second study, looking at pregnancy rates, we can see that the inorganic cows already performed really well with average pregnancy rates of 92.6%. However, for the cows receiving the Bioplex trace minerals, we saw average pregnancy rate of 95.3, which is a 2.7% improvement. And I think this is a significant improvement if we consider for every 100 cows you have, that this means an additional 2.7 cows. And once again, showing that with Bioplex trace minerals, we are better able to meet the cows requirement, not just to prevent the deficiency, but to actually optimize performance and getting her to perform closer to her true genetic potential. And if we look at the weaning weights in orange, we have the heifers and steers from cows supplemented with Bioplex and blue are the heifers and steers from cows who received the inorganic treatment or trace minerals. On average, heifers from Bioplex cows weighed 31 pounds heavier at weaning and steers weighed approximately 18 pounds heavier than calves from the inorganic cows. This is an average improvement of 25 pounds per calf at weaning. Once again, a very significant and super consistent improvement with what we've seen in the previous Florida trial as well. So that brings us to the two large commercial Florida ranches. One had 3,000 cows, and the other one, which I will refer to as Ranch B, had 1,500 head. They both switched from inorganic trace minerals to Bioplex TRT approach back in 2019. Their data collected while on Bioplex were then compared to their previous five-year historical ranch data for when they were on the inorganic treatment. Both ranches had very positive improvements in pregnancy rates. Here you can see they were up 7% in ranch A and 14% in ranch B, with ranch B who had slightly lower rates to begin with. Very consistent response in weaning weight an average 11 pound increase per calf at weaning for ranch A and 30 pounds um, increase in weaning weight in ranch B. And if we look at pre-wean mortalities, almost 2% decrease in ranch A and almost a 3% decrease for ranch B in pre-wean mortality. Since this was a commercial setting, 
there is no data on immunoglobulins or immune measures. But once again, I think this shows us that the improvement in colostrum quality and this the calf's immune status we saw in the university trials do indeed transfer into better disease risk, better disease resistance, and therefore we can expect to see a decrease in mortality. So for our case study, I summarized the results from the two university trials and then the two commercial cow-calf operations. Comparing the results from Bioplex DRT program to traditional inorganic trace minerals, on average, we saw an improvement of 8.2% in pregnancy rates and 21.5 pounds improvement in weaning rates uh, per calf for calves from cows supplemented with Bioplex and Cellplex. So we often get asked what the impact on actual profitability might be. As I mentioned, inorganic trace minerals are typically very inexpensive. So there is a upfront difference in cost per bag or per ton of organic mineral. For this example, let's take a look at the impact on a 100 head cow herd. Considering the average cost per cow of let's say $25 for a traditional inorganic program, and let's say switching to a higher quality organic program will cost approximately $36 per cow per year. This means that for a hundred cow herd, the organic program with Bioplex and Salplex will cost on average $1,100 more per hundred cows per year. Now, taking into consideration the average improvement of 8% in pregnancy rate and 21 pounds improvement in weaning weight per calf, I just showed you for the four trials, then if we take the pregnancy rate times weaning weight, and the price per pound we expect to get paid at weaning. In this case, I used $1.40 per pound. You can easily calculate your expected income. In the case of Bioplex, we had more calves and calves weighed more at weaning. So for a hundred cow herd, this resulted in an additional income of over $8,000. So even though this change in mineral program did cost us an additional investment of $1,100, with the additional income, we still had a return on investment or ROI of 7.7 to 1, meaning that for every $1 extra you spend, additionally in this case, we can actually see a return of $7.7, .7, making this a very profitable and very economically sound decision. So in the previous slides, we focused mostly on pregnancy rates and weaning rates as the main benefits of trace mineral supplementation. But there is also other benefits associated with organic trace mineral supplementation indeed. For example, zinc aids in hoof health and copper and zinc are also very important for bull development and sexual maturity. With Bioplex and Southplex, we have seen benefits in terms of semen volume and concentration as well as with cellplex, we typically see less morphological abnormalities in sperm. Optimum trace mineral status are very important for both donors and receiver cows um, in terms of air quality and maintenance of the pregnancy as well. And lastly, we also hear a lot more about the impact of fetal or developmental programming. And this referred to the impact of the cow's nutrition on her calf which can potentially impact lifetime performance. For example, in a Penn State study, which we didn't um, look at today, we have seen a decrease in age at calving for heifers from cows supplemented with Bioplex. And in the Florida heifers, which were supplemented with Bioplexes, they also reached puberty early. And we know that age at calving and first calving interval can actually impact lifetime performance and profitability. So the positive effects of organic trace minerals do extend beyond just pregnancy rates and weaning rates, and it can have a long-term impact on overall um, herd performance as well. So talking about these improvements um, in critical performance parameters, uh, so taking these um, improvements in mind in critical performance parameters such as pregnancy and weaning weights, I think um, 
it's important to go back to this quote from Dr. Matt Hersham. From the, he was previously with the University of Florida who conducted uh, the mineral trials I shared with you. And Dr. Hersham has presented this data at many beef meetings and he has actually wrote several articles about his findings. And he always emphasized to the beef producers that there should be less focus on that price per bag or per ton of mineral, but rather that we should look at why we see these differences um, in price and how that can potentially impact key drivers of profitability, such as pregnancy rates, number of calves weaned, and weaning weights. So in Georgia, we know our forages does not have adequate trace mineral concentration. So I think this really comes down to a decision of just supplementing them with a cheaper source to get by, or are we actually looking to supplement our animals with a program such as the God Free Breeder TRT minerals, for example, that can ultimately help optimize performance, profitability, and help the herd to perform closer to their genetic potential. So with that, um, thank you guys very much for the opportunity and I'll turn it back over to Wayman for any questions. Thank you, Lorenzo. That was great, uh, great knowledge there. And I appreciate you sharing that with us and taking the time to do it. Um, one thing as I'm listening, I have a lot of producers that think that they should only feed these chelates during breeding season or at certain times of the year. Do you feel like we ought to, should we just do it certain times of the year? Should we do it year round? Should we focus on certain times of the year? What, what is your opinion on when to feed these chelates? So, Wayman, I mean, that's actually an excellent question because if you remember, I showed you the cow's requirement and I showed you where our forages comes in um, with trace mineral levels. And for the most part in the Southeast, we know our forages are deficient in copper, zinc, um, and selenium especially. So to keep her in optimum status for all phases of production, and that includes breeding, that includes maintaining the pregnancy, um, raising that calf, and then getting her rebred, we do recommend having year-round supplementation. And that is to keep her in that optimum level year-round versus just supplementing at a critical time such as breeding. Um, and then you're gonna have to play catch up at a later point, which um, is not always the best situation. Yeah, and, and more and more you read about fetal programming and how important that is. And so, you know, I would, I would agree with, with that statement that, that, that we need to keep these chelates in these cattle all year round. And, and Absolutely. we're talking about immune response. Well, mm -hmm. you're not vaccinating really at breeding time. You know, those calves need to have those minerals in them so that they get a good immune response mm -hmm. so that it, and the growth is there. Um, keeping the cow bred uh, all along the way, I think. Yes, and, nice. You know, late gestation have such a tremendous drain on her because um, her trace mineral status will affect the calves. And during late gestation, we see a tremendous drain on trace mineral reserves going, you know, into the calf. So it's very important to get a rebreak to have her in optimal status. Great, great, yeah. Uh, why, what is it about these chelates? Why do we see the reproductive Im improvement that we do when we're feeding these? That's a very, very uh, excellent question because we know that reproductive performance in ruminants are highly dependent on trace mineral status, on their nutritional status overall. And trace minerals specifically are involved in this um, synthesis of certain reproductive hormones. So if she's in suboptimal status, we might not get um, the full amount of hormones needed to get her bred, but also to maintain this pregnancy. And we've also seen that trace mineral, optimizing trace mineral status can actually help improve the micro environment um, that enables embryonic implants. Um, and then fetal growth and development is dependent on her trace mineral status. So it's no surprise that if we optimize her trace mineral status, that we will have an impact on A, getting her bred in a more timely fashion, and actually through um, optimizing hormone synthesis, we better maintain this pregnancy. So we probably have less um, early losses. 
we we have at our place we have fed these minerals um, in particular to our our donor cows and um, and, and you see better embryo quality, better embryo quantity, you mm -hmm. better you see better embryo survivability. So we're seeing those exact same things that you're talking about. And I think a lot of people that do the embryo transfer really see this. Um, and, and that kind of leads them to probably supplement at that time of year more so than year round. But mm -hmm. I, again, I, I want to emphasize how important it is for that calf to be exposed to them in euro as well as after um, after being born and in and, and, and the immune response because that calf being taken care of in utero uh, with those chelates really, really plays heavily into the immune response, the colostrum, the, the, all those things that you were mentioning in, in all of your studies. And I think, you know, this is, I just read this from a, from a different article where they were saying, um, the testis and the ovaries of the embryo gets developed around 45 days in utero. So you can clearly think that the, the development of those important organs um, is going to be impacted on the cows with, due to the cow status. So whatever we can do to give them that head start, we will um, see the rewards later on. That's great. Uh, that, that's really important. And that's something that I had not heard, but um, really reemphasizes how important it is to have those chelates out year round. You know, we were talking about, um, and now I'm gonna, ultimately all of this is related to, to return on investment because if the cow doesn't get bred, if the calf doesn't grow, uh, the, the studies though that you had in, in Florida in particular were really interesting. Um, and I was curious, were, were any of those cattle deficient in, in their mineral program or? That's actually a good question because um, a lot of time, if you look at mineral studies in general, they like to deplete the animals. So they start from a deficient status, you know, to actually see better results. In this case, no, these animals were actually considered adequate trace mineral status. So all of these cows were on a previous trace mineral program. It was inorganic. So they were not considered deficient cows. They were just considered adequate. And with the organic trace minerals, the bioplates and salflates, I think we just took them from being adequate, what you would typically see to being in optimum trace mineral status. So those cattle were probably being fed, and I'm, I'm making some assumptions here, they were probably being fed a mineral that was that met the NRC guidelines, yes. but maybe a mineral that was using a lower lower quality ingredients and, and by moving up and so we're not talking about when you when you were running your numbers there we're not talking about a difference um, in price uh, from doing it not mineral supplementation yeah. to this mineral sub this is this is the good better best scenario that we yes. were looking at earlier in the in the slides so you would see the amount of return you'd see on these things if you were doing it with cattle that hadn't been supplemented minerals would be phenomenal. It, um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, that data in Florida, how, how does it translate to the rest of the country? You know, Florida, while Florida is close to Georgia and, and we cover the Southeast, um, how how relatable is that that data from Florida to Tennessee or to or even even further away? I think for the most part, if we look at the United States as a whole, pretty much every area struggles with selenium, copper, and zinc. So in that regards, the data is very relatable. And we have done similar studies in North and South Dakota. We've done similar studies in Missouri, Kentucky. Uh, Pennsylvania, um, even Brazil in Italy. And time and time again, what I like about this is the consistency of results. Um, the, no matter the region where we've done these trials, when you take these cows and you switch them from an inorganic program to a TRT program, we have consistently seen improvements in uh, reproductive efficiency and especially in weaning weights. That's that's great. Um, and that's good news because we do, we cover a lot of different areas 
from Madison and and having that information applied to, to all these places is really important. You know, I, I was really impressed with some of the data. You know, when you start talking about increasing weaning and weights 25 pounds per calf, um, you start talking about having 2.7 more calves per 100. You know, then you start talking about two to three percent less death loss after the calves have gotten here. You know, you start adding all those ones and twos up, and they start turning into really big numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people probably get a little frustrated with is that, oh, they say, you know, that's one percent, this is one percent. And, and, and in my business uh, experience, I have really found that those one and two percents here and there are really the things that make a huge difference. I mean, when you start mm -hmm. talking about 2.7 more calves per hundred, um, with coupled with two to three percent less death loss after those calves. Now you're talking about you know mm -hmm. five to six calves difference. Mm -hmm. um, plus the ones that you still have are are getting another 25. Well, plus those five to six are getting another 25 pounds worth of you know you're talking about 150 pounds worth of beef right there at you know, if it's a dollar fifty, that that adds up to real money, and, and just Absolutely. that alone pays for it. Just in those little ones, let alone the other, you know, eighty, ninety, a hundred calves that you had to go along with those hundred. So, um, it, it really looks like these minerals pay for themselves. And and one of the things that I'd like to stress to our to the folks listening, you know, th this 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 presentation was set up to discuss a fifty pound bag of minerals. Um, but I want to emphasize that, that all of these technologies that you guys make, we put them in our bulk feeds as well. And, and, and the vast majority of what we do in a bulk bin is going to be custom mixed. So we can pick and choose and put these things in there as, as needed. Um, so I think those are, that's great information. I mean, it, this, these numbers right here alone can pay for most of your mineral program. Um, so I, I think they're certainly worthwhile looking at. Is there anything else that, that you'd like to maybe add that, that we haven't touched on? No, I think, um, I think we, we talked about all the main points, but I do want to add, for example, when we looked at that ROI, return on investment is very hard to actually calculate, right? You have to have quantifiable results. So we calculated this ROI only on reproductive efficiency and weaning weight. We did not take into consideration less treatment costs, um, for example. And that's another one that will quickly add up is if you treat a calf one or two times, um, you have the vet come out, um, the medications. So definitely that's another huge benefit of using a holistic approach um, in terms of trace mineral supplementation. And I'd like to add, there's there's so many people that are that are feeding cattle now for the uh, I don't want to say the organic programs, but the antibiotic free and, and all natural programs. And so when you start using these products that we've gone over, these chelates and, and the, the selenium yeast, um, that's going to make those all natural products work a little bit better. One, you're going to get some extra growth out of them, but two, you're going to have less drop out of the program because now we're not treating them with having to treat them with antibiotics to, to keep them alive. Uh, so I, I think that's another great point to, to these, these uh, chelates and this um, selenium yeast. So, um, well, we appreciate your time and, and appreciate you sharing your knowledge and appreciate Alltech's help in educating people. Um, I'd like to say that if anyone has any questions or would like more information about any of this stuff, um, by all means, contact us. All of our information is at www.godfreesfeed.com. Uh, Montana uh, Smith Dyer has her information on there. Um, mine's there, and, and if we need to, we can get in touch with you guys and, and, and hook any of uh, these consumers up uh, with more specific questions. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank you, and uh, thank we appreciate you. all your help. Thank you for the opportunity.